Bienvenue à « Comment gagner de l'argent » et « Comment créer une entreprise et augmenter vos revenus » avec Glendon Cameron. What's going on, Jeepers? I was having a consult with a client a little while ago, and I'm heading to the gym. And I always get these themes, and I love talking to people. You get a certain depth that you just can't get in email or any other interaction. We were talking, and we were talking. And I noticed there's this uh, dichotomy between men and women in terms of setting goals. Sometimes men go way too far and women don't go far enough. Let's glance, she's female. And she was, she said something that pissed me off. She said, well, that's good enough for me. And before I said it, I was like, why the fuck are you putting a ceiling on your goals? You got quiet. I only talk about the ones where I do something inappropriate, and I'll admit it, and I apologize, but I was pissed. I was pissed. It's like, why, what, what, what are we doing here? What are we doing here? Why, why are you saying that's good enough for me? And Have you ever heard someone say, well, I don't want much? Well, that's good enough. Why in the fuck are you putting limitations on certain things of your life there doesn't seem to be a limit on bullshit and fuckery I mean on Facebook you can get that 24-7 365 there's no limit on that but something that makes your heart go pitter patter something that takes you to a different place mentally usually scares the shit out of you uh eh, that's good enough nah nah I really am not. Nah, nah, that's not good. Uh, no, no. That, that's too much for me. That's too much. I just want a little bit. That's like being at the all-you-can-eat buffet of life and saying, hey, yeah, just give me one of those uh, prongs. Yeah, one of the big shrimps. Yeah, that's, that's all I need. Yeah, I mean, I know I can get 30, but I'm only going to take one because I don't want to appear to be greedy. I don't want people to be greedy, you know. I don't want people talking about me saying that, you know, I'm eating too much. Ma'am, it's an all-you-can-eat buffet. But I know, I know. I just, and my girlfriend, she's over there, and she's always called me up. The, the stuff is out of control. I have a task for you. I want you to sit down, sit back, and think of all the times that you said, oh, that's too much. And I'm not talking about in terms of price, but mentally it's something that you wanted, something that you um, crave, and you're just, um, nah, that's too much. And I started to think about it, because we uh, were talking, and I was helping her with some stuff. And then I asked her, it's like, why do you feel the need to limit yourself? And she said, I don't know. And we talk, and, and this is where I get real personal and ask all kind of crazy questions. I'm like, what's your religious background? You're a Protestant, or you're a Catholic, or you're Jewish? Nope, nope, none of those. So it wasn't religion. And I'm like, where does this come from? Then we hit upon it. One person in your family tree can fuck up your life. She had this aunt who always said, people just want too much in life and she and this is the key she really liked that on people that you respect and appreciate even if they're wrong as fuck typically you tend to gravitate towards that information and take it as gospel um one of my uncles was a good dude told him I wanted to be an entrepreneur and uh his thing was um black folks don't have that kind of intellect i was 11 Fortunately for myself and my future, I said, fuck that shit. I, but it, it was a battle. It was a battle. Because when you deal with someone in the position of authority, someone you respect, someone in the family tree that is about something, it resonates with you. It, it, it's like you people. You got to be really careful what you tell your children. You got to be real careful. Because 
I think I spent maybe a decade regurgitating my upbringing. Just, just having to get rid of it because if you cling to certain things, even when there is evidence that that thing doesn't work, it's not good for you because of habits and social sanctions, you'll keep on with it and be miserable and wonder, why well, isn't my life getting any better? I've seen this too many often. And, you know, we talked about her aunt, and, you know, she's just like, yeah, she's a real nice lady. And I said, look, I am not going to insult your aunt. Uh, I will say this. Many people felt that it was better to downplay your wants and desires versus going through the pain of realizing that the way that you want them or whatever skill sets or however your life is predicated at the moment you may not be able to get those things at this particular moment with the things that you have and for some people that could cause them to go a little lonely they was like well i'm a good person the universe doesn't care if you're a good person the universe cares if you're a functional person and you contribute something to society that's why so many good people get capped ran over and bad shit happens to good people and bad shit happens to bad people and good shit happens to good people and good shit happens to bad people it's where you are in the food chain and speaking of the family tree i'm just having a conversation with a friend because i had to embark on changing my family tree when you see that shit is wrong when you see that it doesn't serve you well uh, many people just sweep that shit under the rug and it's like, oh, you know, we're just going to deal with this. And I, I just refuse. I totally refuse because, once again, you have to be careful what you tell your kids. You have to be careful about these things that you instill. And one of the things that I've noticed is some families foster a level of dependency in other things because they don't really know how to foster independent. If you're a parent that's never moved out of your family home and you can't give your kids that oof or that example of how to do certain things because you never did it. You just never did it. And you know, it took me a while to understand this because I understand now that I am an alien, I, I came from the planet Spank, Spankable. I came from the planet Spankable, and I'm here to teach the other, you know, Earthlings how to do this shit. Because when I look at myself, I don't think of myself as remarkable. Because I went through a lot of shit. If I was remarkable, why the hell did I go through all that shit? I look at myself as a WIP, a work in progress. I'm not done. I'm not midpoint. I'm just working. And every day I get a little bit better and things become a little bit clearer. And at the end of the year, I look back and it's like, wow, that was phenomenal growth. But every day is incremental. But some of these concepts that I'm trying to uh, distill and drop create some mind meltdowns. Or, and the fuckery machine just goes <laughs> because when you're talking about, you know, your family and you're talking about protocol and history and traditions, some of them are really good and some of them are really fucked up, depending upon the family, you know. There's some awesome families out there and there's some families that look awesome but are deeply fucked up. And no one's talking about it. No one's talking about it. But going back to her and the aunt, it's like, this is what you need to do. You have to realize that it is not greedy, selfish, or of poor character to want certain things out of life. People will tell you that, hey, you want too much. One of the things that I got as a kid, because I knew I was getting the hell out of Alabama. I knew it. Uh, the term at the time was high-minded. Because I had big ideals and used to read National Geographic and I was like, yeah, I'm going there and I'm going. and it was like, you're just a little poor little black kid. Your little black ass ain't going nowhere, boy. Stop dreaming. You need to get yourself together and prepare to either go and work in the steel mill or uh, 
go ahead and do that mind thing. Get in the mind, get you, you know, talk to someone, have one of the men refer you in, and you go knock those that coal off that, that rock. That's what you need to do. Because that's pretty much what you're all you're situated for. And I, I heard shit like that. I mean, I really did. And it was just like, no. I was like that little rabbit. I was like, no. And I hopped down a different rabbit hole and got the fuck out of there. But when you have this stuff, and a lot of times it doesn't make sense because you don't see it as harmful. And the thing that drives people crazy is there is no malicious intent. When we think of harmful, when we think of damage, when we think of dysfunction, we think of harmful intent, malicious, something malicious, a conspiracy. No, no, no. Much of this stuff is very benign in aggressiveness, meaning there is no aggressiveness. They just, just say stuff like, you know, you have the parent who will give you the, what I call a double slap. You're like, hey, mom, I'm going to school. Are you going to finish it this time? Who's paying for it? That kind of stuff. There are people who deal with that stuff. And that is really, really toxic. <laughs> it's not benign. I mean, it's not really aggressive. It's, it's just they don't think you're shit. So essentially, you have to work on your family tree where you are. You can introduce these concepts and ideas to the rest of the family. And some people may go, you know, that's cool. And other people may go, fuck you. We are the Clampets. This is how this shit goes. And if you're not down with Clampet doctrine, fuck you. You're out the family. And uh, give me the corn cob pipe back because, uh, you, no, that was Uncle Bob's and you don't deserve that. But when you are in the throes of creating a life of intent and design, growing the business, and if you're the only one in the family who's doing some shit like that, stuff comes like my friend who with the cookie business uh she was just telling me some stuff that one of her cousins was just like you don't have no cookie business why are you pretending to be something you're not i, I bullshit you not and when she was just telling me it's like but you you do have the cookie she's like i know it is going back to stasis judgment you know from uh when i was doing i think i know that car when i was doing uh 30 days to 2500 which is still active if you want to sign up and she was just a little hurt. She was a little hurt. Then another one of her friends was like, well, your cookies are too expensive. You know, you do not know how to sell cookies. This is coming from a person who's never had a business, who doesn't sell cookies. But somehow, because of the First Amendment, many people think the right of uh, free speech also has an, as an acutement to free speech, the right to be right. It's like, well, I said it. I have free speech, therefore I am correct, even though that the whole assumption is erroneous as fuck. So she's going through it. And then, you know, I'm talking, you know, with my client today, and I was like, hey, you know, you've got to give yourself permission to be successful. Because right now, you feel like that someone else needs to give you permission to be successful. And that's where this ceiling shit comes in. Because I understand. I'm from the planet Spankable. I get it. I totally get it. And I'm going to have to take some cultural indoctrination lessons and shit. But hear me out. Just hear me out. You don't have to seek permission nor approval from anyone if you're over the age of, you know, 18. You're out the house. Like, if you live with your parents, uh, you're fucked. You, you do have to seek permission and approval because they are taking care of your ass and until you get out and support yourself under your own power you got to do what they say that that's just that's me and if you're 30 years old living with your mama you got to do what your mama say if you're 40 if you're 50 living with mama you got to do what they say because anytime that you put yourself in the position of a child you'll be treated as such regardless of your chronological age and you you don't need this permission you don't need this approval. And some people, and I will tell you, when you get to that point where you're like, you're right, you're right, I don't, I don't need that, you will start having people kiss your ass. Doesn't make sense. When you needed their approval, they uh, pretty much treated you crap, you know, like crap. But 
when you got to that position of internal strength, when the world that you crafted was not uh, built on the approval of others, and you begin, you, you got this internal improvement where you were able to fashion whatever you were doing, and uh, this person is going to saw me backing up, but didn't care. People just are so rude sometimes. All right, let me get in here. I don't want to hit a car because uh, my insurance is damn cheap, and I want to keep it that way. It's real cheap. It's like ridiculously cheap. Okay, it's interesting how that happened. But all right, on the approval thing, uh, placing ceilings on your success, actually saying that. Hey, I have to gain this approval, or whoever, to be successful. Because that's where the, the ceiling comes from. Because if you are saying, because there's no reason you can't have what you want if you're willing to work for it. 2014, 2000, whatever. There's no reason you cannot have that life or do what you want. But it all starts with a choice. Now, the cool thing is, as we talked and... <laughs> As things were were going down, she said, I'm going to call my aunt today and just tell her I have a business. Because another thing I learned was no one, and she's been at this for a while. Now, I'm not talking about she's brand new. She's two years deep. And no one knows she has a business, which I understand and actually recommend in the beginning. You know, hey, if you got a business and you don't need to reach out to your friends and family because it's something that they wouldn't be interested in, you know, this. Um keep it on the wraps for a few months and maybe a year until you build it up until it's stronger until it has the ability to you know to be able to withstand the stuff that's coming because this is a common theme all of a sudden um i don't know what's happening down here you know sometimes i think i need to go back to spankable but this thing of placing limitations on yourself before you set out is very counterproductive because in your mind you've already placed a limit it's like okay i am capable of you know let's pretend that you are a ferrari you you are a ferrari you're a black ferrari or red ferrari you're purple orange whatever that's the hot color you're that ferrari and on your speedometer it goes up to 250 miles per hour but you take this little limiter that's orange and you slide it at 55. And I don't care. The car has the capacity. It has all this power. I mean, the special transmission, all this stuff. But you have already placed a limiter of 55 miles per hour on this wonderfully exotic machine that you are. And no matter how good the gas is, you're only going to go 55 miles per hour. Many people do this. I have a goal, you know, uh, I've sold, shit, I said 12, I, I looked today, I've sold 17,000 books in five years. My goal is to sell 100,000 on my own. We'll see how that goes. I got a lot of time to do this, but that's the goal. So I need to sell 83,000 more books. That's what I got to do. And that's my goal. And I've, once again, uh, I'm from Planet Spankable, if you didn't know. I was in one of my writing groups, and I put that shit out there. And you're going to do that without Amazon? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. That's the plan. But why? Amazon will validate you. If you're on Amazon, that gives you a certain level of uh, validation, and it makes you more authentic. And I was like, I am pretty damn authentic already. What are you talking about? And I was listening to this, it, and you know, and it was like, well, you know, you got your own website. No one's gonna buy from you. And I was like, oh, no, that's not that's not true, ma'am. Uh, people buy from me. They do, but they don't know you. You're you're just you know, if you had a publisher. And I was like, really? If I had a publisher, what would happen? And well, it would validate you because they know what publishing's about and you don't and you need that because 
And I'm just listening to this, and this person doesn't know my history, right? I've turned down not one, but two book deals. So I was like, mm, okay, 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 uh-huh, uh-huh. And I've learned that when you're in the valley or the pasture, you can't kill sacred cows without being massacred. And I, you know, I saw it because she was talking and then I heard it. Moo. And I heard it again. Moo. And I was like, oh, oh, whoa, whoa. There's a sacred cow in the room. And, you know, for since I'm from Spankable, I have this verbal ability to say words that are bombs. And if I say the wrong words, shit explodes, right? It just poof, it explodes. And I was like, okay, ma'am. Uh, Thank you for telling me that. I, I didn't know. I'll take that under advisement. You're such a nice fellow. I really want to see you do well. And you get yourself a publisher. And uh, and she's all caught up in validation and approval from external sources. Now, this is the thing that I told her. And y'all going to love this. Y'all going to love this. And I said, I got a question for you. And she said, sure. I said, ma'am. Who started that publishing company that you think that I should be affiliated with? She said, I don't know, but it was probably somebody. And she got quiet. Because that publishing company, those, those random houses, those Harper Collins, they didn't they they haven't existed since day one. Someone said, You know what, Ma? What, Daddy? We're going to start a publishing company. What? But no one knows who we are. That's right. But they will. And whoever Harper or fucking Collins was way back when, they're gone. But we know their names. Because they kept that shit going. Someone built that shit. And, you know, she got quiet and everything. And it, it was just like I kind of flipped it on her. And it wasn't even the Jedi man, mind trick. It was the spankable trick. It was the <laughs> spankable trick. You know, mind trick, the spankable mind trick. So we're talking some more. And she said, I never thought about it like that because of the cultural indoctrination of Americans that um, if you don't go to school, you're stupid. Uh, if you don't get an education, you're not going to have a great life. If you don't save for retirement, you're fucked, which could be true if you don't have a business kicking you some money. Uh, I got a different take on that. Should I even tell you? My goal is to have a business that doesn't require a lot of input from me when I'm 80, 90, 100, whatever, and I'm getting that money. That's my plan because some stuff that I looked at, even if you do the right thing, invest early, get the stuff going. Who's to say that the people who are managing your money are going to do the right thing? Because, you know, Kara Sedwich and Kevin Bacon. Lost, I believe, 22 to 26 million they had invested with Madoff. I am not kidding you. I can only imagine how sick those poor people were when that went down. Because they were set. They would have been better off leaving that money in a bank account than giving it to him. Wouldn't have made a lot of interest, but they still have it. So I'm, I'm talking to people today, and I have a question for you. Do you feel that you need validation and approval of others to be successful have you ever placed a ceiling have you ever okay this is where i'm going to go i'm going to get right here and i'm gonna stop i'm gonna stop right there i'm gonna stop right there because that's 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 good enough for me have you ever said something that fucked up to yourself that's good enough for me have you ever said that because i was talking to a friend about something last night that is very uh, salacious and i can't get into it because it's um, it's too much for this conversation. But he listened to my advice because I said, the average man, if he really knew what he was capable of, he may never go to sleep again. If you, I mean, seriously, because he listened to me. He listened. He listened to me. And he started doing these things that I told him to do. I gave him some of that spankable shit. It's pretty powerful. Pretty powerful. Because I look at myself. Product of a single parent household. 
Poe as shit. Not poor Poe. I said Poe. P-O. Poe as shit. Um, some direction. I will say that the people in my neighborhood, there was support. There was community. Some direction. But the reality is, I wasn't supposed to be shit. And once again, going back to what I was talking about, the regurgitation of my upbringing, that was part of it. And I just started making decisions that I'm going to be the shit. And I'm going to be a shit starter. And I'm going to have fun. And life's going to be wonderful. And I'm going to fucking change the family tree. Because when something's fucked up and you sweep it under the rug, what you're saying is to your, your kids, here, kid, here, kiddo, here's your inheritance. This is for you. All of this fuckery and fucked up and insular, being insular and lies and shit. This is for you. This is what I want you to give to your children. That's what you're saying. And I don't want to hear any of this shit. We in Paris did the best. No, because if you're doing the best you can, you're going to be honest with yourself and you're going to say you're fucked up. And you're going to seek help, whether it's counsel, reading books. And you're going to start a personal development program. And you're going to become a different person. You're going to become unfucked up if you're doing your best. Because if you're doing your best, you will acknowledge that you are fucked up, which is a problem for some people. I was fucked up once. Exceptionally fucked up. I was just living in fuckery. I mean, I had a fuckery garden. You know, some people have a victory garden. I had a fuckery garden. And I was just out there growing all kinds of fuckery. Then one day I took a flamethrower and was like, <clears throat> and there was no more garden. But seriously, have you ever, 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 ever said this shit was good enough for me and did put a ceiling on your ambition, on your talents? Have you ever done something that fucked up? Have you? Do you even know that saying that to yourself is fucked up? Because you, do you know? I mean, seriously. So with that, before I go in here, and this is a light day, this is one of the reasons that I am fucking around and doing videos and stuff, because I'm going to be in and out of there. Really think about what you're going to do with the rest of your life, and think about, is there a ceiling placed on your success? If you look up and there is a bar that's there, but you can see round the bar, you can see over, that means you've placed a ceiling there. There's too many pitfalls and... Um, bad things happening for you to go ahead and be complicit with your mediocrity. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. All right. I'm Batman and uh, I got to go lift some weights and I'll see you on the good side.